Okay, let's now talk about the very confusing subject of how one calculates heart rate variability. Because let's again reiterate what we're talking about, right? So if anybody has seen an EKG, everybody watching us has, you've got your little P, Q, R, S, T, and you just line up a strip of those and you imagine you were doing this in the olden days, you'd have a set of calipers, you'd mm -hmm. literally measure across R to R to R to R. So let's pretend we have a minute's worth of data, Joel, mm -hmm. and a person's heart rate is they're, they're laying down and resting. So they're at 60 beats per minute. So the approximate beat to beat interval is one second on or, average. Sure. Yeah. On average or 1000 milliseconds. Um, what's happening at the physiologic level that makes it such that there is variation and how is that measured and calculated from the raw data? And let's start with the gold standard and assume you have an EKG. Sure. Yeah. As you mentioned, you're starting with this gold standard of, okay, we can accurately pinpoint where are these R to R intervals. And so we pull out what are called the RR intervals, not you know surprisingly, and we'll plot those. Now, from there, you do what's called correction. Basically, you have to filter data there for filter ectopic beats, which are beats that don't actually arise in a silent atrial node. You fill out if there is any noise in the signal or anything like that, and you end up with this clean set of RR intervals. And let's so let's say I gave you 60 of them. Sure. And it's again, it's a person who's at rest. So um, on average, it's a thousand milliseconds between them. But I'm going to give you 60 numbers that vary from 900 to 1100 milliseconds. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So this is where things get interesting because when we talk about HRV, we just usually give a number. Yeah. And that number can be different. But a better way to think about HRV is just a framework to assess variability because there are multiple ways to calculate that. There's one category called time domain where we literally just do some math. The most common one is RMSSD root mean successive, successive squared differences where they just do some basic math and they get that number of milliseconds of RMSSD. There's SDNN, there's PNN50, there's all these different, call them time domain, where they just are taking that time series, doing some math on it, and giving you a number that represents the average variability. So now, let's talk about the RMSSD sure. because it appears to be the most common It is the most common one. for multiple yeah. reasons. What we're, again, measuring is that average variability across that time span. And what that represents is the input of the vagus nerve, the parasympathetic system, and it's input into that sinal atrial node of the heart. Because fundamentally, the autonomic nervous system is, is governing that heart rhythm. And primarily what happens at rest is it's that parasympathetic system via the vagus nerve. And the way that it works is it's innervating that sinal atrial node in the heart and it's pulsing in beat with respiratory processes. So as we inhale, that vagus is inhibited and you get kind of this acceleration of heart rate. Now, actually, I should back up. If you were to cut out the autonomic nervous system, you'd have roughly an intrinsic heart rate of about 100 beats per minute, somewhere in that range. Everybody basically does.